Hey guys, Pierce Clugs here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing Of Man and War. Um, this game is actually story-based, and I started to record it just a few minutes ago, and I realized that most of the game tells its own story. So I wanted you guys to be able to hear this um, wonderful story. You can find this game on itch.io. It is called Of Man and War. Um, definitely go and check that out. But as of now, I'm going to be having my mic muted um, for the majority of this video. They say that war changes you, no matter where you are. Somehow, like a pebble dropped in the river creates ripples. War does the same. I don't know about all that, but I can tell you that war, it changed me. I remember that night being so hot, unbearably hot, hot to the point of being angry about it. Captain wouldn't let us take any of our kit off either, so hauling all our gear in that heat only made things worse. We finally came to a crossroad and spotted a small farm in the distance. We knew none of our guys were out this way. That was significant because we all saw a faint light moving from window to window. Smitty and I were the lucky ones to scout ahead and find out what was going on. We knew what it was. Jerry's had occupied that farm. I watched it happen, and I will never forget. Never. And just like that, he was gone. I had known him for almost a year, and it took less than a second to take all that away. We all had a best friend growing up. I spent a lot of time over there remembering mine when things got real bad. After Smitty, I just sat down and tried to go back to a better time. Took me and dad about a week to build that treehouse. I spent so much time in there with Winston, just reading comic books. To this day, I don't know how that ball held up as long as it did. It's still in a drawer back home. Winston sure did play rough with my toys. He really wasn't that good at hiding, but I would always play along, pretending to not know where he was. I would just say that I'd give up loudly and start leaving. And then, every time, without fail. He would think he won, but looking back, maybe he was letting me win. Davis was what you would call a class clown. The captain could never keep him in line because every time he tried to discipline him, he would have to do it while laughing at the last thing Davis did. I'll never forget the last time Davis made me laugh. It was right before he died. I always hated these things. They were noisy as all get out, and you knew if you heard one, there were a lot of Jerry's nearby. 
We knew they were on the other side. We heard them barking orders and the sound of their boots stomping all over the place. They were not trying to hide the fact that they were there. It means they were not worried about what was on our side of the rubble. It wasn't until later in life that this kind of thing bothered me. Back then, they were just a threat to be dealt with. Time is the great equalizer. Time gives you the opportunity to realize they were a lot more than that. They were people. Davis saw her first. Sometimes Davis could lose track of a situation for the sake of his entertainment. He took a bow and said, Hello, madame. We are your designated heroes, here to free you from your tormentors. All we ask is for a cigarette and a parade. Even in the intensity of the moment, I couldn't help but laugh. But it was short-lived. There was nothing beautiful or honorable in how he went. It wasn't like the movies. For a long time after that, any time I laughed, I remembered Davis bowing to that frightened woman and her face when he died. The one thing I can say the movies get right every time is that there's always a girl back home. And yeah, we keep a picture and we look at it all. Mine wasn't just any girl. I guess most guys thought that way about their own girl. I don't know. I just know my Justine was more than I had to deserve. You know, I never did catch a fish in that pond. But I came back time and time again because, well, you'll see. Something in this patch always got me sneezing and my eyes watering. It was dreadful. I can just imagine what I looked like. But it was always worth it. These were her favorites. I always had one ready in my hand when the inevitable happened. My God, looking back always gets my heart racing like it was happening all over again. I would see some horrible things in my time. Things that would have me jumping out of my skin at night, unable to sleep. They say time heals all wounds, but that isn't true at all. The wounds don't heal. Not fully, anyway. They leave scars. Fragments that cannot be undone. But for every horror I endured, Justine ensured there was a greater beauty to have made it all worthwhile. I didn't know him longer than five minutes. We were thrown together into a mixed squad once the chaos broke out. Even as close as we were to the end, it never stopped feeling like it was never going to be over. When you look at them rolling in, you would swear nothing could ever take one of these things out. What happened here left me wondering if any of them would even make it out. Blake was frantic, kept shouting, say again, say again. All I could hear from the other end was fragments of what may have been words, and an awful static. They were screaming something fierce. I know they had just gone through the same chaos we had, and were on edge. It didn't stop me from keeping my rifle trained on them, any more than it stopped them. I knew this was it. It was over. 
I couldn't tell what he was telling them, but they were upset, confused. Kept looking from him to me and back again. It wasn't until I felt a hand on my shoulder that I finally stopped staring at them. It was Blake. Blake had a look about him like he knew what was going on. Something in his eyes told me it was okay. He said he'd gotten the radio to work. The Russians had Berlin. Hitler was dead. It was over. It took me a long while to stop sobbing on his shoulder. But to be fair, it took him just as long. We had walked through hell and back again over there to stand up for something, to stand against something, to rally behind more than just our countrymen. We rallied for the sake of the world and what it would mean to be a part of it. So many boys never grew into men, never started families, never witnessed the results of what we fought for. I'm not asking you to remember me. I'm asking you to never forget them. Don't ever let it have been for nothing. And please, whatever you do, don't ever let it happen again. And that was it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And kudos to the uh, dev team for this wonderful, wonderful game.